Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out here today. My name is Ryan McHale, and I am an educator. I am a doctoral student, and I am the host of an education-based podcast. And what I've seen uh, lately as an educator worries me. You know, original freedom writer Manny Scott has said on numerous occasions that schools today are really good at measuring the things that don't matter. Unfortunately, the things in life that do matter, they're immeasurable. You can't measure them. And yet, in our schools, we are so focused on data and test scores. Now, I'm not fully against data at all. I do it every day. And I use data to drive my instruction every day. But that is only one piece of the puzzle. And what we need to do to ensure that our students are making success and they will find more success in the 21st century workplace is to instill within them and strengthen some key traits. And as an eighth grade teacher, I see kids every year leave me in June and they go off to high school. And I like to send a little video towards the end of the summer to get them excited about the possibilities that exist in high school. And last year, I sent a video out, and it was called, Be Great Today. Now, I know that's an overly simplistic and cliched statement to make, but what I did was I took great and I turned it into an acronym, standing for the five traits that I believe that combined with academics will allow our children to find success in the future. And it starts with number one, grit. We need students to understand the importance of being gritty. Angela Duckworth has defined grit as passion and perseverance towards achieving a long-time goal. And what we're seeing today are kids that are easily defeated. When things go wrong, they stop. They consider themselves a failure, and there's no attempt to right the ship. But the truth of the matter is that this life is going to knock us down more times than we can count, and it's how we get back up that defines us. And right now, we have a young generation of children who believe that if things aren't perfect the first time, oh well, too bad, I have to move on, I have to find something else. But that is not the case. So how, as educators, can we help foster grit? And I think the first thing that comes to mind is the teacher standing in front of them. I believe that teachers need to strengthen their relationships with students. They need to open up themselves. They need to show their human side. And they need to show that we're not perfect, that there are things that knock us down, and that we have had to pick ourselves up. And that is how you find success. You know, just the other week, I had applied for an assistant principal job. I had done 500 hours of internship, master's program. I'm in a doctoral program. I have the podcast. I'm feeling pretty good. Go in for the interview, felt great. I did not even make it to the final three. I was devastated, but I had to pick myself up. I had to move on. I had to realize that there are other opportunities out there. And I had to go get up, not worry about it, and look for the next opportunity. I say this because I told my eighth graders this story. I had no problem sharing that. Because what they need to see is that there is an adult that cares about them who is also going to find trouble in life. That they are going to have times where they are knocked down. But they are going to get back up, dust themselves off, and go get it. 
We need our children to have that grit. And once they do have that grit, and they do decide to get back up, what do you need next? You need to be reflective. You need to take a look inward and look at what you've done and what could have been better. Too often, we see children and adults blame everything on somebody else. They didn't get the job they wanted. Well, it must have been the interviewer's fault. It happens all the time. We are so quick to blame everybody else for all fa of our failures and disappointment that we're not doing the most important thing. We're not taking the time to figure out what we could have done better. And so how do we do that as educators? Well, there's a couple of things. One, reflective journals are fantastic in the classroom. Have kids write down their responses. What went well, what didn't, what could be better? Add it to your assignments. Make it part of the rubric that they peer review and they self-edit and they write down their remarks. Once they're reflective, they are able to see where they can improve. The next thing that our children need to be successful in 21st century workplaces. Empathy. We need kids to be empathetic. And that's what we struggle to see today. We struggle to see kids that understand where other people are coming from. They're so stuck in their bubble. And it's not that they refuse to get out of the bubble. They just don't know how whether they've been sheltered or they've been lucky enough to not witness different hardships in life, they just don't understand. How can we make them empathetic? How can we make them understand the thoughts and feelings of somebody else, somebody different from them? Well, I'm a firm believer that we need to open up and expand our minds when it comes to literature in the classroom. Right now, we are so focused on the classics but some of them are outdated. And it makes it very hard for our students to understand and relate to and connect with that it doesn't serve the purpose that we're hoping it does. I believe that there are books and there are poetry out there today that haven't been brought into the classroom that could truly help, but it takes risk. And we need to make a seismic change there. One of my favorite books of 2017 was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Absolutely loved it. It's a book that I believe can change lives and should be read at the middle level and above. That book has been banned by a number of districts across the country because there's some swears in it. We need to take risks. Poetry. Poetry is tough for kids. A lot, of, a lot of kids don't like poetry. A lot of it is because it's outdated. The language is tough. I get that. And it's hard for them to make a connection. Two years ago, I brought in spoken word poetry. And it changed the game when it came to poetry in the classroom. All of a sudden, we were reading contemporary poetry that met the standards of our common core, but in a relatable way. The kids connected to it. They connected to the performance of it. There are so many wonderful spoken word poets out there today. Olivia Gatwood, Sarah Kay, Clint Smith, so many wonderful spoken word poets with messages that can reach our kids. I say novels because that is the prime example of something that can really pull in a kid, can really make them see the world differently and through the lens of somebody who's not like them. 
So after we have empathy, what do we need to do? We need our children to be ambitious. We need our children to never stop, to keep going for that next goal. When you have ambition, you are working tirelessly to achieve a goal. But what we need them to see is that there is no room for complacency. Once you reach a goal, it's time to set another one. Once you reach that goal, you set another one. And you do not get complacent. Because the truth of the matter is, there is always going to be somebody else behind you looking to take over. And the second you stop fighting, and the second you stop learning, somebody's going right by you. And that could be crushing. We need to make sure that our children become lifelong learners. That they always strive to improve. That they always set new goals. You need that fight in that fire in order to find success out there in the workplace. How do you do that in the classroom? Well, it's all about growth mindset. We need to make our children in our classrooms understand that they can do more. It doesn't matter how well they're doing. There could be more gains made. Too often we have this fixed mindset where someone doesn't do well. Well, I guess that's not where I'm going to go in life. I'm going to have to move on and find something else. We need to make sure that our children are seeing the yet. You're not good at that yet. You've struggled with that, but it's okay. You will get it. We'll work harder. Never lose that goal that you have. You want to be successful? Make it your goal. Fight for your goal. You'll reach that goal, but then you need to find another one and keep going. Sustained success is very hard in 21st century workplace. And you cannot have an extended amount of time in that successful job unless you have that ambition. So once you have that ambition, you find that job that you've always wanted. You're in that career that you've always aspired to be at. What's the last thing you need to do? I believe it's that you need to be thankful. Thankful for the opportunities that you've been afforded. Thankful for the job. Thankful for your family. Thank you for your friends. Stay humble. As I've said, there's always going to be someone there behind you wanting to take over. Never stop. My father-in-law passed away just two weeks ago, and that really brought home this idea of thankfulness. And understanding that we only have one shot at this life. And our children need to understand that we only have one shot at this life. Appreciate everything you have, but keep fighting for more. That's going to help you find success. Now, as I look at these five traits that make up the great, I always say again, be great today. But there's a line in a brand new song by Jason Mraz that I love. And he says that may the best of your today be the worst of your tomorrow. And as educators, isn't that what we want for our students? Today's a great day, but don't worry, tomorrow's going to be even better. The day after that will be better than the day. That's what we need to do as educators. And my hope is that my students will grow up not just believing in the be great today motto, but that they believe they will be great every day. Thank you.